So you've ignored the man who cried bear in Castletown for a good chunk of the game, only to be amazed the very moment you stumbled upon the infamous wild bear as you went exploring. Well, consider yourself lucky because you can actually tame it for use in battle as your personal mount. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Fellow warriors, welcome aboard the Josh the Cole. Today, I'll teach you how to go from this, holy meat buns, it's a freaking bear, run, to this. I am the bear whisperer. Bear witness to my unbearable barrage. The earliest the bear mount can be obtained is at the start of chapter 13. There is a reason for this, and I'll explain why in due time. But for now, just make sure you've at least progressed this far into the story. Furthermore, it can be obtained on any difficulty with any character. And if you're wondering, there are no trophies for obtaining the bear. It's completely optional. Taming the bear is simple. In any exploration map, you must visit the bear enough times in order for it to go from disliking you to magically loving you. Progress is tracked by the text bubble that appears when approaching the bear. There are four thresholds. First, the bear seems to be in a bad mood followed by, the bear is eyeing you with caution. Next is, the bear seems to be interested with you. And finally, the bear seems to have taken a liking to you. It might turn up in some castle town somewhere. When you reach the final threshold, all you have to do is head to the castle town labeled as Mount Kudo, which is only available to you from chapter 13 and onward. Upon arrival, locate the bear man marked by a red triangle and horse icon. Talk to him to purchase the bear for a whopping zero gold and voila, you are officially a bear whisperer. Sounds easy, right? Well, it definitely is, but the tricky part is actually encountering the bear. What I've found is that the bear will only spawn in areas where there are no enemies. Now the actual chance of the bear spawning in these specific areas is surprisingly common. I didn't keep track of the exact amount of approaches needed to tame the bear, however it really shouldn't take too long. Here's the most optimal way I've found to farm the bear mount. Head to the exploration map called Mount Kokuzo, which is also available to you by the time you reach chapter 13. The goal is to reach this specific area, where the bear has a chance of spawning. Ignore all enemies and just focus on reaching the area as fast as possible. If the bear spawns, approach it to trigger the text bubble to receive credit. At this point, you can safely pull up the pause menu and choose End Exploration to save all progress and quickly exit the map. Even if the bear does not spawn, do the exact same thing and exit the map with end exploration. Once you exit, you are free to begin the cycle anew. Now rinse and repeat until you reach the final text bubble threshold. Each run can easily be done in under a minute. Keep at it and you'll eventually be able to ride your own bear. Remember, the bear is not guaranteed to spawn every single time. RNG is RNG and depending on your luck, your time to complete it will vary. When riding the bear, it controls identically to the panda. Both use their claws to swipe at enemies. They both belly flop, roar, and charge at the opposition exactly the same way. Heck, their stats barely deviate from one another. Aside from the obvious visual differences, what sets them apart are their skills. The panda has acceleration, which gradually increases your movement speed while riding. On the other hand, the bear has resilience, which makes the player immune to being knocked off while riding. Also, when compared to the panda's steep price tag of freaking 120,000 gold, the bear's affordability at zero gold is easily the winner. Therefore, in my opinion, the bear trumps the panda. Unless you really love the idea of riding a panda into battle, you're better off using the bear. If you want to argue that the panda is better just because of its speed, well, that's fair and all, but if speed is all you care about, at that point you might as well just stick with Matsukaze. Ah yes, perfect segue into my next point. Is there any reason to use the bear over Matsukaze? Well, you already know the answer. Of course not! Matsukaze reigns supreme in every single department. But you know what? It doesn't matter. This is Samurai Warriors, a game where you can single-handedly slay thousands of peons. A game where logic takes backseat to fun, and nothing screams more fun than riding a goddamn bear into battle. 
Now who's with me? Who will join the Bear Master Race? <laughs> Well, that's pretty much it. I hope the video was helpful in your quest of obtaining your very own bear. As usual, until the next batch of juicy info, stay tuned for more Muso greatness. I'm oh my Josh, and remember, do not pursue Lu Boo.